Hello everyone and welcome to round 7 of this year's Qatar Masters. We have a very nice game between Magnus Carlsen and the Murli Kartikin. Uh, we've had Murli a couple of times on the channel already, if you guys remember in 2019 he played a game that uh, I uh, named uh, I believe the greatest queen sacrifice of 2019. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, do check it out. Really, it's quite wonderful. It's um, uh, reminiscent of the old queen captures on F6 by, by the great Rashid Nezhmedinov. Uh, if you haven't seen it, first link in the description below. Uh, do check it out but now this is a completely different type of game uh, and uh, uh, well uh, also uh, a very strong opponent in that game I believe uh, he faced Alireza uh, here he faces Magnus so let's check it out with pawn to e4 by Magnus pawn to e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 Magnus goes for the Rui Lopez with pawn to e6 the Morph Morphe's defense bishop to e4 uh, and knight to f6 with knight to c3 pawn to b5 and b3 and we have bishop to c5 uh, the so-called, uh, I don't know if, if it's uh, the Arhangelsk variation, I think it is, as uh, Fabiano Coruana mentioned it on his Twitter feed after the game, but I, I think the original Arhangelsk is uh, without the knight on c3 and with bishop uh, on b7. Uh, I could be wrong though, uh, I, I will have to check, but yeah, uh, here are some uh, uh, standard moves are pawn to d3, castles, uh, but here we have knight to d5 by Magnus, only a few games in the database with this move, uh, and now, uh, how do you how do you play this? Well, uh, pawn to d6, uh, and uh, you could also go, uh, instead of this, you could also go for knight captures on e5, it's uh, perfectly playable, knight captures, pawn to d4, attacks the bishop and knight here, and once you capture, a queen gets into the game, pawn to d6, d6 uh, again uh, 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 well-known stuff but uh, knight to d5 is what Magnus chose pawn to d6 and pawn to c3 now preparing to strike in the center and Morley defends with uh, uh, there is a game where h6 was played here he plays bishop to e6 and it is now already as of move 8 that we have a completely new game so okay uh, pawn to d4 Magnus strikes in the center e captures c captures and now first bishop captures on d5 uh, we have e captures on d5. If you go after the uh, dark square bishop first, then bishop captures on b3 attacks the queen. So uh, it's a, yeah, a nice little in between move. Now queen captures or a captures doesn't really matter. D captures and it's a perfectly fine position for black, if not better. Uh, so that's why e captures on d5 uh, and now we have bishop to b4 with check king to f1 and now knight to e7 getting ready to pick up uh, on d5 uh, queen to d3 uh, and now we have queen to d7 uh, maybe castling king side maybe castling queen side all depends on what magnus decides to go for and magnus decides to go for pawn to h4 uh, which means that Murley will likely not be castling king side even though king side castles is perfectly safe uh, he decides the castle queen side uh, obviously he wants um, uh, to have a more interesting of a game regardless of who his opponent is uh, but he doesn't do it first first h6 and only now after pawn to h5 knight e captures on d5 and after rook to h4 magnus going for the rook lift now he castles queen side even though again king side castles is the the safer choice uh, magnus goes a3 attacks the bishop here bishop to a5 and now pawn to a4 trying to open up um, uh, murli's king side to go after the black king so bishop to b6 and now knight to d2 uh, we have rook h to e8 and now a captures on b5 a captures and knight to e4 so okay a very interesting position here and really has to keep an eye on this b5 pawn but he has a fairly uh, strong presence in the center here the knights uh, are, are very well placed usually you say uh, the knights uh, aren't very well placed if they are defending each other but sometimes uh, it, it it just works here he plays king to b7 and magnus plays queen to f3 uh, a nice idea here uh, if you want you could go for bishop captures on h6 right away it's a uh, very much doable for example bishop captures on h6 and after g captures now you play knight captures on f6 and after knight captures queen to f3 check nicely connects with the knight here and if you can play c6 you can play d5 you could play a knight to e4 all are all are very much possible and for example queen captures pawn to d5 uh, white takes back the pawn equal material 
uh, with bishops of opposite color, which isn't really relevant here unless you trade off the queens and rooks. Uh, so probably the side that gets to attack will have the the upper hand. So this is one way to play it. However, after queen to be a uh, king to b seven, Magnus played queen to f three. Of course, he wants to put his queen on the same diagonal as the king, and now he has some very tricky ideas. Now, uh, you know, if for example knight captures on f six, or if bishop captures on h six and knight captures on f six, uh, you will not be able to move this knight due to the pin on. on on this diagonal. So here Murad played queen to c6, of course not allowing that. And also in some lines maybe you have to be a little bit careful for the rook not to move from the back rank as the queen is now also putting pressure on the bishop on c1. Uh, and the Magnus could, uh, well there are basically two ways he can play this. He can play knight back to g3 if he wants to keep the tension and he could go for bishop captures on h6 now. Uh, which is uh, kind of what he played, uh, but also knight captures on f6. And now you simply trade everything captures, you will go captures uh, on uh, c6, uh, king captures and bishop captures on, C, uh, on f7, uh, winning back the pawn and it's uh, a, an equal endgame. Rook to f8, bishop to g6, and okay, now, now we play the d4 pawn is a little bit weak, but uh, you know, perfectly playable. However, Magnus played bishop captures on h6 now, and uh, you have to uh, decide what to do here. It's a very tricky position, but Magnus obviously missed something here because it's not the same as with the queen on d7. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute strongest way for Murli to continue this while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on uh, finding this idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Rook captures on e4. This is, believe it or not, the move that Magnus missed, even though it seems like a fairly obvious tactic. Uh, uh, I have no idea how he missed it, actually. Uh, I've started following the game at around when Magnus played queen to f3. And here, uh, Morley was already down to some, I believe, five minutes on the clock. Magnus had like half an hour. And I believe he was also playing on his time a little bit. Maybe that resulted in him missing this. But now, uh, okay, w w what are you going to do? You, you just uh, lost material and you have to take it back. Okay, rook captures on e4, g captures on h6, and now what? Uh, maybe he thought that knight would capture rook, but no, just g captures on h6. Now the rook has to move, rook back to e1, and now king back to b8, unpinning. And now uh, Murli has uh, two knights for a rook, which is, which is of course quite a lot. We have rook to e2, uh, and now uh, queen to b7. And now the problem is you can't really move the knight, the queen on c6 is uh, undefended. And you already moved the, the king from b7, so you don't want to play king back to b7. So queen to b7, and now bishop captures on d5. Just going after the pawn here, now you have to capture with the knight, otherwise the knight just hangs. Knight captures and queen captures on f7. We have pawn to c6, offering a queen trade, and Magnus goes for it. Queen captures, king captures, and now uh, rook to d1. You have to defend the d4 pawn. It's uh, not uh, not too bad of an endgame, uh, rook against the bishop and knight, but with the, uh, the d4 pawn being so weak and you having to defend it with a full rook, uh, not the best maybe. King to c7, and now rook to e6, going after the pawn. And it seems like, okay, if Magnus can actually win the h6 pawn and he can start those kingside pawns... Um, uh, being pushed up the board uh, should be very nice for him. But Morley finds a tactic that defends uh, very nicely. Rook to f8, and now you cannot go after the pawn. If you capture the pawn, just knight to e3 check, and the f pawn is pinned. You're going to lose a rook here, or the exchange and the game. So here, rook to d2, Magnus needs to defend, but now rook to f6, and he saves the h6 pawn. So rook to e4 by Magnus, now comes king to d7, pawn to g3, and rook to f5 now. Uh, putting pressure on the pawn here. Pawn to g4 defending and rook to f7. We have rook, rook to d3 and now knight to c7. So okay, again, if those uh, pawns can uh, get pushed, uh, should be okay. If not, uh, probably it's going to be very hard for Magnus to hold this. We have rook e to e3 uh, and now knight to e6. Uh, guarding the g5 square, not allowing, and also the f4 square, not allowing the, the pawn pushes to continue. Uh, we have pawn to d5, uh, sort of a trick if uh, bishop captures an e3 split, then you 
have this nice uh, uh, D captures on E6 Svishinsuga, where after King captures, you will sort of equalize here uh, as the, the material is now equal. And it's a uh, rook endgame, so it will result in a draw. So after D5, C captures on D5, a very simple solution, uh, rook to F3 by Magnus. Now rook to G7, going after the pawn, and the rook captures on D5. We have rook captures on G4, and now rook to F6, again, Magnus hopes to, uh, to, to win the h6 pawn, but now bishop to d4, attacking the rook. And what's the real idea? Uh, well, after rook captures on h6, now rook to f4, going after the f2 pawn. So you're basically shifting one type of advantage into another. You uh, First you were playing for material, now you're already playing for the attack. You have the bishop and rook going after the white king, and the knight will uh, soon join them. Rook captures on b5. Uh, rook captures an f2 with check. This also uh, forces the white king to remain on the first rank. King to e1 and now knight to c5. And now once knight to d3 lands, uh, of course, you know, that's pretty much it. As you know, your, your checkmating patterns. King to d1 by Magnus and now bishop to e3 with tempo attacking the rook. And it was in this position on move 45 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, the point is that after you give a check here or you don't, doesn't really matter, you best move with tempo. Black King also moves with tempo, attacks the rook and that's it. Wherever you move the rook, uh, once a knight to d3 lands, that's it. You control all of the squares here. Uh, and um, uh, rook to d2 will be checkmate. So there's no way to stop this. You can stop it. You can play rook to c8 check. Uh, sorry, no, you can't go there. And then go rook to c2 sort of stops checkmate. Uh, but then just knight captures on b2 check. And you either have to give up the rook uh, or, you know, there's really not uh, much you can do. You can, uh, you, you can give up the exchange with captures, captures. But again, uh, you're down a, a full piece. And okay, you can, you, you kind of have to fight against this pass pawn, but it's very easy. We'll just play king c4, king to d3, and checkmate the white king, and the only way for white to prevent this is to actually go after the pawn and try to check you once a king reaches d3. But now we're just gonna give a check, and after king e1, pick up the free pawn, with this pawn being defended, uh, a white has zero counterplay here. So yeah, really a weird game by Magnus with the white pieces, no less, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, probably here at this moment where he played the bishop captures on h6 is where it all went wrong. Like I said, it was possible uh, on the previous move. If you went for it without this queen to f3 move, it's uh, definitely possible to play it. But with the queen on c6, uh, a new variation introduced itself uh, and, uh, well, he fell victim to it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, very nicely done by Murli Kartekin, always uh, with a pleasant surprise on this channel. Uh, let me just check the standings uh, after the, the, the first seven rounds. There's two more rounds will be played so uh, on five and a half points we have a lot of people so on five and a half points shared first place Narayanan, Javakir Sindarov, Arjun Irigaisi, David Paravian, Murli Kartikian and Nodirbek Yakubov. so those are the uh, people on five and a half then with five you have Hikaru, uh, Parham Maksulu, Anish Giri, Nodirbek Abdusatorov, uh, Shimanov, Vakidov, Kaidanov, Gregory Kaidanov the legend 64 years old uh, uh, Playing uh, amazingly, he's in number 13, and he won a very nice game against Jordan Van Forest. Uh, yeah, probably the game that we're going to show next. Uh, so, you know, stay tuned for that. Uh, so, yeah, that's the game and a little bit of uh, extra info about the event. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to uh, thank your mom's smothered mate, Tucker Berkman, Eddie Indus, BulletChestThriller.com, and Chad Smith for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.